Well, it's good YouTube. It's your boy JY. Uh, today we're going to do a little uh, OCG Mega Game breakdown, uh, I guess, review. Uh, so let's have a look. So, you know, we've got the update on Road of the King. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Phantom Knight's still taking 32.5% of the of the meta there, and then we have uh, Fluanderies, or I'm going to call them Flunderies because that's just easier. Flunderies taking 13% and Eldritch taking 11.7. And um, yeah, let's have a look at some of the other decks. So Sword Soul taking a small portion, 9.1%. We've got a bit of Drytron, 3.9, and Prank Kids, 3.9, and then other taking 26%. Okay, so um, yeah, the meta I feel like is going to be pretty similar to to what we have at the moment. Um, uh, Phantom Knights are not super dominant at the moment. I think Sword Soul is pretty popular, but I think Phantom Knights will soon start to take over in the TCG. So, yeah, 25 Phantom Knights, 10 Flunders, a lot of Eldritch. Okay. Oh, we've got two Adam uh, I'll be interested in seeing those deck lists. And Grass, Grass, Destiny Hero, Invoke Shadol. Wow. Yeah, me, you know me. If, if Grass is being played, I'm involved. I'm involved. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's interesting to see Grass. Uh, Megalith FTK. Uh, some Salam and Great, okay, people still playing Salad. And then we've got some Brave Dragon Link, okay, Brave Good Stuff. Uh, I wonder what that is. Uh, oh, Brave Sword Soul Yang Zing Tenyi, okay. That'd be interesting to see what that is. We have some, you know, just other random decks, Cyber Dark, Orcus, Chaos Dragon Link, Fright for Despia, Sky Striker, Destiny Hero, okay, One Spiral, okay, geez. All right, let's uh, jump into the list. So. First one we have is uh, a fan of my deck, uh, Kosaka Koki, and uh, 2019 world champion. He went 6 2, finished second. Um, and this tournament was a 3v3, which had 30 teams, 90 participants. Okay, the most interesting thing he dropped Artifact Scythe and Artifact Dagda and reverted back to IP Mascarena. Uh, although Scythe is still powerful, it doesn't have that impact in the Flunder and Eldritch matchup. Okay. So I made a video yesterday talking about like why I chose not to play Scythe and a lot of people were questioning me saying like oh wow like you know Scythe is so powerful or so broken and you know like why didn't I play it and the reason for that was because I was predicting there to be a lot of rogue decks and it feels so validating to see like OCG do the same thing with the appearance of rogue decks you know of course you wouldn't play like if, you're, if your opponent's going to set fire back row or tribute summon of course you wouldn't play Scythe in your main deck. So it feels kind of good like that yesterday I was literally talking about this and today the OCG come out with an update, you know, like kind of reflecting my thoughts. So that's pretty awesome. But enough about me, let's jump back into the deck. So uh, he ran two goes of match in his side deck against Blunders uh, and Sword Soul and Prank Kids. Okay, cool. And the, de the deck list is pretty standard to be fair. Um, yeah, just pr pr pretty standard lineup. Playing 41 cards, yeah, 41 cards, and yeah, pretty standard extra deck. You know, now they got IP instead of the Dagda and the side deck. So, the one thing I always found like kind of weird about the OCG is that, like, the the lack of back row removal. I feel like three twin and reboot, like only four cards. I I, I don't feel like super like that's still like a coin flip to see one of those cards going second game two and three. But I do understand you have to side other cards for other matchups. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't feel like super confident with just three twin and reboot going second against like back row decks. So I, I feel like I would need more than that. Uh, but that's just me personally. But I know other people are, you know, are happy just to side four cards. And um, yeah, now let's go into the next deck list. Oh, we have uh, uh, Shinsuke Hiyama. So uh, the 2015, 2016 world champion. Actually, we, we, I met this guy and we got a little, we got a little picture together. <laughs> yeah, we met, met him at Worlds 2017. Uh, it, was, it was a cool experience. And yeah, similar to his teammate, he, he chose to drop Scythe and drop Dagda from his build. And um, oh, he ran three Ghost Reaper Winter Cherry to side in against Phantom Knights and Prank Kids. Okay, and I wonder, so they, they're using Reaper to, to hit Phoenix Enforcer? Um, which is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, pretty interesting to see that. And um, nice to see, like, uh, I guess Winter Cherries have some play again. You know, that card always comes in and out of the format depending on, like, you know, um, what what decks are, are doing best and uh, how reliant they are on a certain extra deck monster. Like, we had, back in the day, you'd, you'd 
play against Burning Abyss and you're just Cherries or Dante and they were just screwed or Cherries, you know, Beatrice or whatever. And then like, for, you know, through Zodiac, you Cherries are dried and, and they wouldn't be able to play as well because they couldn't put up any defensive um, any defensive cards. You know, they'll just have pretty much vanillas on the board. The Zodiacs can't really do anything without the Dryden. So it's interesting to see that card being played again. And he also um, chose to play uh, a Meow Meow for... Um, for prank kids, so you can reaper their meow meow. Wow! So, so, so to stop them from playing their one card combo, and um, yeah, and uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, so it just puts them on a situation where they they can only follow up with a one fawn or pandemonium, so they have to have the extender, otherwise they lose. So that, that's pretty, you know, puts you in a pretty, pretty favorable position. And a prank kids is, is a quite it's quite a hard matchup. You know, Butler is pretty hard to beat. You know, rejecting your board twice is. is it's hard, to, it's hard to go over, so I can see why you do that. Okay, and the deck list again is pretty pretty standard. Um, not much to say about it, to be fair. And uh, extra deck, same side deck, okay. The cherries, and only two twin and one reboot. Like, if you're worried about all these trap decks, and then, but I, I, I do understand in the main deck, in the Brave Engine, they have the Wandering Griffin Rider, which can like negate uh, any card, it's like an Omni negate. But I still don't feel that secure. Oh, they also have the spell as well. I, I, I forget. They have the equip spell, which actually can bounce the card. So I guess they, they have like two ways in the main deck to kind of deal with back row, like without having to go any extra. So they've got the griffin and the, the equip spell. That kind of makes a bit more sense. So they, they have inherent engine ways to out back row cards, um, you know, without accessing the extra deck. And then obviously in the extra deck, you've got cards like Unicorn uh, and Break Sword and, you know, the Phoenix and Force, so if you're able to get that on the board. So that's, that's fair. And you've got the Zeus as well. So yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, and now for the Fluanderies, uh, we have uh, uh, Kutora, who went 7-1 uh, and finished first. And uh, so <laughs> in a previous game, in a previous tournament, he lost a game where he drew multiple token collector and wasn't able to play. So he added one Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon and one, one Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon Overlord to be able to make his collectors go into Zeus. This sounds kind of silly to me, to be honest. To like to, to, to dedicate like uh, two extra deck spaces just for the chance that you draw two token collectors together. That that seems that seems kind of wild. That seems kind of capped, you know. <laughs> like uh, that seems kind of like yeah. It seems seems uh seems a bit seems a bit tapped. Yeah, <laughs> but you know you do what you gotta do. You do what you gotta do to try and get them dubs. You know. Um, okay, and um, yeah, uh, yeah. With the OCG, they got the, the three uh, quick play spell that lets you play through hand traps, which you know makes the Flunder deck a lot better than it is right now. Like in the in the TCG at the moment, it isn't as as good one thing to note as well they're playing all three spells together prosperity extravagance and duality so whereas in tcg right now we're only playing like you know either prosperity and duality or uh, duality and extravagance they, they chose to play all three together which which is to be fair like you're only going to really be resolving like you know one or two per turn i think like duality with the other one so yeah, that, that's fair. And I, I'm guessing the deck makes the deck super consistent. And work it, worst case, if you do have a dead card, I don't think it matters because as long as you draw your combo with a way to play through a hand trap, then you're good to go. And with like, you know, three fields, well, uh, four field spell with a terraforming and three quick play spell, uh, that, that makes sense. And I guess that's probably why they opted out the, the, the gold sock, probably, because they have so many like engine ways to, to play through those hand traps, I guess. Um, Okay, and oh yeah, not not main deck in the D shifter, I guess, either. So I'm assuming they're just like trying to play for combo. So, um, or not trying to play for combo. It's, it's main deck in the is kind of weird. Um, now we have the Eldritch deck, bro. Like, looking at all these floodgates. Oh, it makes it makes make, it makes me wince. Ah, like all these floodgates. Ah, oh, man, triple skill drain, triple rivalry, triple goes in, triple. Uh, there can only be one and vanity's emptiness oh my god oh, oh, oh. and these guys feel safe only playing like three twitter reboot i would be throwing all my back row removal just throw the whole truck at it my whole side deck would just be back row removal screw this oh like man that's so crazy just all them floodgates man just take me down to floodgate city where the traps are, are pink and they don't feel pretty <laughs> nah yeah nah yeah nah that, that's not for me, but 
Yeah, it's crazy still. And oh, we have the uh, Lord of the Heavenly Prison or the, the Sky Prison. Yeah, that, that guy it must be pretty insane for them, like uh, going into game two and three, like your opponent sides Twin Twister and then boom, you just reveal there's the Sky Prison and your opponent starts to cry. Yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty mad. And um, yeah, so that's the Eldritch deck. And then we have Sword Soul. Oh, this guy went 8-0, okay. Uh, Lipton went 8-0, including a buy. And um, didn't chose to main deck Dimension Shifter, probably because of all the trap decks. Like if you're playing against Flunder or playing against uh, Eldritch and you activate, like, you know, they go first and you play Shifter, they're just gonna pass to you. And then it just does nothing really. Like it, it's not as, as, as effective as, as you'd think. It's just, it's just a bit of a minus one. Uh, but yeah, that makes sense. And main deck in three Judgment is interesting as well. Um, yeah, I mean, Judgment is a really powerful card if you draw it going first. Uh, that, that gets you the dub pretty much. Like, it, it's just such a such a powerful card. Like, negating a normal summon is just so insane. Or, or negating, a, like, a, a power spell as well. Like, that it is really powerful. And, okay, in conclusion, Phantom Knights is without a doubt the top choice for the current metagame. Hel uh, having held on to the first position for six continuous weeks, and it speaks volumes when two world champions, uh, Shinsuke Hiyama and uh, Koki Kosaka, you know, are playing the Destiny Hero Brave Phantom Knight deck. So, yeah, it's interesting to see. I feel like our formats like are almost like aligning because, you know, I feel like our meta is going to look pretty similar to theirs. Uh, and um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how our meta unfolds, but Flunder won't be as strong, you know, because we don't have the uh, quick play spell as of yet. And... Um, yeah, I think a lot of people will choose to play Sword Soul as it's a new deck right now. So it'll be interesting to see how our meta unfolds. But the main thing is they took out Scythes. So it's interesting to see, you know, like it, like it's like kind of like ebbs and flows. You know, some people, everyone plays like a uh, combo deck that like, you know, locks you out of the extra deck. Okay, to counter that, I'm just not going to use my extra deck. I'm just going to set a bunch of traps or tribute some monsters and screw the extra deck. I won't use it. <laughs> and then like then... There were combo plays, okay, we, we can't, that doesn't work anymore, we're gonna counter and do something different. So it's just interesting to see how they're like kind of countering each other. But um, yeah, it'd be, it's, just, it's just interesting to see the the what, what the OCG are up to. But yeah, that's just my little quick overview. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, yeah, uh, like, uh, leave a comment below about your thoughts about the OCG format, and how you think it affect our format and you know whatever, uh, whatever thoughts you wanna leave down in the comments below. And if you want to see more from me, uh, subscribe. And yeah, I hope, hope you uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, peace out. See you.